Steel for humans, silver for monsters, Daedric for Daedra? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're pitting two RPG powerhouse franchises against each other The Elder Scrolls versus The Witcher. This isn't a death or glory mission. I need to know what we're dealing with. This is going to be a five round winner take all showdown. Just a little reminder, we're pitting the entire franchises against each other, so this isn't just The Witcher 3 versus Skyrim. We're looking at both series from top to bottom. You know I don't find that amusing. Round one, story and lore. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? For this round, some could say that The Witcher has a bit of an unfair advantage. Having drawn its world and characters from Andrzej Sapkowski's novels, the games have always had a solid base from which to build their world. I can't explain it, but I feel a bond when we speak. I know you are important. But the series certainly can't be accused of resting on its laurels. Using the books as a jumping point, the games have been able to tell rich, fascinating tales populated by unique and colorful characters. It was a long day. I wish to hear the important bits. Any game can give you factions. The Witcher games have politics. Surrender, Arian. You'll be treated with honor. Go plow yourself, king! Sure, you can go to bed with NPCs in a ton of different RPGs, but how often can you say you've experienced genuine romance? This white-haired devil certainly has. That's not to say that the Elder Scrolls series is lacking in the lore department. With innumerable deities, religions, regions, nations, towns, factions, and races, you could go on and on. Wouldn't want them to think you're part of the common rabble, now would we? Diehard fans can tell you where Argonians come from, what a Khajiit's guilty pleasure is, or which areas of Vardenfell you might want to avoid if you don't want to get caught in an ash storm. Where would you like to go? And Bethesda has built all of this from the ground up. That's an impressive feat by any means. But in the storytelling department, Bethesda's RPGs often fall flat. Their strict, dogmatic adherence to non-linearity means that telling a cohesive narrative is often next to impossible. What's this prisoner doing here? This cell is supposed to be off limits. Usual mix-up with the watch. I... Never mind. Get that gate open. Since they can never really know what character you've made and what you've done so far, the quests, characters, and story all have to play it very safe. Often, the best story to come out of these games are the stories that players make for themselves. That's commendable, but it's not really what we're looking for here. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. For being able to capitalize on the lore in order to tell deeper, more emotional tales, the White Wolf takes this round. Winner, The Witcher. Success? We'll see in a minute. I knew it would work. Round two, role playing. Who are you? So how much RP do you get from these Gs? How well does it, in the most literal sense, allow you to pick a role and play it? Take your papers off the table and go see Captain Gravius. When it comes to The Witcher, all that in-depth storytelling comes at a price. While you can choose to pour your resources into herbalism, magic signs, or pure badass swordplay, you're quite pigeonholed in what you can and can't do with your character. Last I heard, my dear, I give the orders around here, not you. If you don't really think swords are cool and you'd rather shoot a bow or rock a Gandalf-style robe while tossing fireballs, you're basically out of luck. So, I've two options. I can either start cultivating turnips or leave. On the other side, you cannot deny that Bethesda's RPGs give you options for your character. You finally arrived, but our records don't show who quit. Recent entries may have trimmed down those options a bit, but you're still given a massive amount of control over what your character can do. Players are free to mix and match to their heart's content. Heck, you even have to pick an astrological sign before you can begin. Which sign marked your birth? Reading might be so 2010, but the fact that dialogue on your end is primarily confined to text not only allows for a greater variety of responses, but also allows you to project any sort of personality you desire onto your unique character creation. I haven't always been a priest. In my youth, I followed a different path. Sure, it might not be as seamless and cinematic, but if role-playing is what you're really after, that's a sacrifice that's well worth it. For allowing you to play the role you want, the way you want, the Elder Scrolls series handily mops up this round. Winner, the Elder Scrolls. Sure, take all my things, please. Round three, environment and world. We are not welcome here in Whiterun, so we will be in Rorikstead if you learn anything. So, now that you got your character, where do you go? 
Regardless of the lore, what are the worlds you're exploring like, and how much of an incentive is there to just go get lost? Ready to go? How many times are you going to ask me that? To the swamp. The Elder Scrolls games have been doing the sandbox RPG thing long before anyone ever used the term sandbox RPG. One thing you know is that the world is always gonna be huge. While Skyrim essentially set a new standard for how big and dense an RPG can be, earlier entries like Morrowind and even Daggerfall had already set the bar extremely high. Not only were these places huge, but there is perhaps no other series that gives you a better reason to lose yourself in the wilderness, diving into dangerous caves and scanning the horizon for interesting landmarks. Stay safe. On top of that, the open-ended nature of these games suit these environments perfectly. Most people will tell you that if you leave the tutorial section only to go straight to your first quest marker, you're totally doing it wrong. First, you need to get out of here. Through that door must be the entrance to the sewers, past the locked gate. That's where we were heading. So, if we were only counting The Witcher 3's gorgeous world, this would be a much tighter race. While some areas might look a bit samey, that doesn't take away from the fact that the Wild Hunt's environments are some of the best we've ever seen. The added benefit of next-gen hardware certainly helps, but the technical feat on display cannot be understated. The series as a whole, though, has often struggled to break free from linearity. The Witcher 2 did a good job of making the environments feel open-ended, but a quick look at your map often revealed that the sprawling forest you found yourself in was more of a series of interconnected pathways and corridors. Plus, there was never the same push to discover and explore, and you had to tackle each larger zone in a specific order. Mm. See him dashing along those walls? Can't rightly say I ever saw his sword the blade move so fast. This round goes to the scrolls. Winner, The Elder Scrolls. That can only mean one thing. You must be Dragonborn. Round four, combat. <laughs> if there was ever something that turned people off from the first few entries in the Elder Scrolls series, it was probably the combat. Morrowind looked fantastic in screenshots, but as soon as the sword starts swinging, things get a bit floaty. Every subsequent entry improves upon its predecessor, but the overall feeling is always a bit lacking. Skyrim was definitely the biggest step forward, but there's still plenty left to be desired. In the combat department, though, the Witcher games benefit from their singular character design. Because Geralt is always going to be a swordmaster, the developers have been able to make combat into a tighter, more visually impressive package each time. While the way the swordplay works may vary slightly from entry to entry, the end result is almost always something better than what the Elder Scrolls can come up with. The added bonus of a fixed third-person perspective also certainly helps The Witcher clinch this round. Winner, The Witcher. Round 5, Legacy. You heard the summons. What else could it mean? Okay, so how have these franchises affected the gaming industry as a whole? And what legacy did they leave behind? I made sure a few potentially trustworthy witnesses saw us together could link us. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was our game of the year for 2015. Probably the first title to feel truly next-gen. It showed everyone just how big, polished, and powerful an RPG could be. You've known many. What's it matter? Only ever thought of you. But up until 2015, the series struggled to find its footing. The first Witcher game showed enormous potential, but it was still a bit of a mess. What do the villagers do? We mine clay and produce bricks. I see none working. So much so that it had to get a re-released enhanced edition to fix nagging issues like an opaque menu system and crazy long load times. Assassins of Kings, the sequel, was a huge leap in the right direction in terms of storytelling and presentation, but many of the systems didn't quite gel, and the slightly simplified combat system didn't help either. I think we can all agree that the third entry definitely hit it out of the park, but it was coming up to bat as a major underdog. Well, come on. While The Elder Scrolls definitely had a head start in this department, the legacy of what Bethesda has created has had an immeasurable impact on the gaming industry. Perhaps the gods have placed you here so that we may meet. 
while Arena, Daggerfall, and Morrowind incrementally grew the series from cult classic to well-known franchise, Oblivion and Skyrim basically rewrote the book on open-world games. Simply put, they didn't just raise the bar for RPGs, they raised it for games in general. There hasn't been a Dragonborn seen in the land for centuries. Perhaps the best example we can use to illustrate of just how much of an impact Skyrim alone has had on the industry is the fact that even though it's four years older and on a different generation of hardware, people still hold it up against The Witcher 3 to compare the pros and cons. It remains the zero point in many people's minds against which all other RPGs are compared and evaluated. Although, if CD Projekt Red continues to push the genre like it has, that might soon change. For now though, Bethsoft's baby has left the biggest dent. Winner, Elder Scrolls. Lead the way. Well, there you have it, folks. While The Witcher is a beloved series with a spectacular recent entry, the role-playing chops and impact on the industry that the Elder Scrolls series has built up over time were just enough to keep it from being dethroned by that new kid on the block with the fancy hairdo. Our winner, The Elder Scrolls. So, what do you think of our verdict? Be sure to clash silver and steel in the comment section, and for more great videos published every day, hail Sithis!